What's up guys, Matt Acaster here, and today we are back in Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. And today I figure, let's go take a look around the junkyard, see if there's anything out there that catches our eye. And we have arrived to a very windy, dusty day. Oh, what do I see here? Is this the Hoonicorn? It is indeed. Oh man, I've been waiting to find this one. I knew it was in here, but it has taken a while before I've actually stumbled upon it. This is version one. Must Ford Mustang RTR Hoonicorn mileage 238,226. Wow, Ken's really been driving that thing, I guess. That is very cool. Oh, you can even see the cantilever rear suspension there. This is this is awesome. But before I, I mean, I should buy this right now, but it's it'll be waiting for us. I want to make a pass around. This is honestly the first thing that I just saw here in the junkyard. We've got a 911 here. Yep, just a 87 Porsche 911. No, I shouldn't say just. It's a 1987 Porsche 911. I say just because, I mean, that's the unicorn, right? Let's see what else we got. Oh, rounding the corner here, I see a very neglected McLaren F1. Wow, it's missing pretty much everything. Can we even afford it in this state? Let's see. No, 877,000 with a $41,700 buying commission. Yeah, we're. We're close, but not, you know, can't, can't afford that just yet. Wouldn't even be able to get the, all the parts we need. It would probably be wildly expensive for that thing. We got a pair of Corvettes here. We got a Stingray style, and then we've got that. They don't actually call them Corvette. It's the Bolt Reptilia R2, but come on. There's a lot of good stuff in here today. <laughs> you Sometimes I'll come out to the junkyard and it's slim pickings, but it's actually some decent stuff out here. Over here, we've got a Lumina stock car. Yep, Chevrolet Lumina stock car. Dirt cheap, but we did we did one of these recently. If you want to see that, it's in a recent upload. It was very fun. Days of Thunder stuff there. That's everything else. I think you know what we're going with. You probably already know from the title of the video. We're definitely buying the Hoonicorn. When do you get a chance to buy a Hoonicorn? Especially at $12,000. Except, take it to the garage. Well, that was a very fruitful trip from the uh, to the junkyard. We have our Hoonicorn, it has arrived. Look at this thing. First things first, we'll give this thing a wash, see what it looks like underneath. Then now it's getting revealed, we can see the black and really not much else. Little bits of uh, decal left over. Yeah, this thing's missing a lot, but that's what it's here for. Let's take off this engine cover and see what we're working with. Probably uh, not a whole lot. Once again, no oil pan as this seems to be what I run into anytime I come bring something home from the junkyard. Uh, no oil pan, but I see we've got our interesting how they do the all-wheel drive setup here. This is a mod, guys, by Payne. Dead Bob 777. You can uh, check out the link in the description if you want to support Payne. He's always making some of the best mods for Car Mechanic Simulator. Let's get the drive shaft out of here. Get that bolt stuck. There we go. And those bolts out of the way. Onto the transmission. No starter to remove and a bunch of stuck bolts. This thing is rough, but hey, when you find the Hoonicorn, you gotta buy it and bring it back to life. See if there's anything left of the clutch flywheel and all that. Yeah, it's all still here. Just really rough. Pressure plate, there's gonna be, I have a feeling this is gonna be a theme. A lot of stuck bolts on this car. Get this out of here. Then we can remove our clutch there it is. And our flywheel. This thing is ready to be pulled out. Use the engine crane and pull that motor out. It has been removed. Take it over, take what's left over to our engine stand and mount it. Nice thing is not a whole lot to disassemble, I guess. That's one way to look at it. More stuck bolts. Get this carburetor off of here. Wonder how much horsepower we can make out of this particular engine. Suppose it's the unicorn worth throwing everything at it. Get these wires out of here. Spark plug. Surprised they're still here. Get that last one out of here. We got some push rods left. There are two, I think. Yeah, we just got two push rods left. And now we can remove the engine head. Only two stuck bolts for this one. There and there. And 
off it comes. There we go. A lot of carbon buildup here. Pretty rough in there. Take the coil off. Let's pull out the pull off the front of the motor here. Get rid of that serpentine belt. That one. Water pump pulley can come off. Go ahead and take the water pump. Our harmonic balancer right there. Timing cover to expose our timing set. One clip left there. Remove the distributor cap. Exposing our rotor. And get rid of the distributor there. Now we can pull the cam. Go ahead and grab this alternator. Quick tear down here. Power steering pump. There you go. And now we're ready to tear down this side of the motor. Some more push rods over here. Now we can pull some of these out, looks like. They're not connected at all. Yep, these are not connected at all to the crankshaft. Makes it easy. Just pull it all right out without even having to flip it over. We can pull that crankshaft out and there goes the engine block, just like that. Time to repair the parts that I can replace the parts that I can. Actually, I'm going to buy quite a bit of the um, performance parts for this. I think I, even if I can repair the heads, I'll just sell them off and probably won't even need that gearbox uh, just because we're going to go with, we're going to be making a decent amount of horsepower. Probably not ridiculous horsepower, but a decent amount. So a lot of the stuff will get upgraded anyway. But for now, I'm just going to keep doing this and I'll see you guys when I'm done. Let's build out this engine. Let's start with our crankshaft. Be a good place to start. And go with our camshaft. Go ahead and throw on our ignition coil while we're here, as well as our distributor cam gear. And I bought a lot of performance parts. Lots of performance parts. Even stuff I was able to repair, I still bought the performance part version of it, including the heads, the camshaft, all sorts of stuff for it. So. We should be pushing some pretty good horsepower by the time this thing is all completed. Get our water pump pulley on, as well as our harmonic balancer. On it goes. We're ready for our alternator. I do love these simple push rod engines. They, they are fun. So, so little to them, really. Serpentine belt. That's why they're so bulletproof, essentially. Not a lot to go wrong. Radiator fan. Just build out the whole front of the motor, why don't we? Fuel filter. I can see oil right there, oil filter. We go ahead and add that. Now we're ready to add our pistons, performance pistons nonetheless. And we'll get all eight of these in. We are now ready to mount our rod caps. All eight. And this is our final rod cap. And now we can put on our crankshaft bearing cap. Both or all three of them, not both, all three of them. I was just thinking in my head, I had two left. That's why I said both. There we go. Get that crankshaft bearing cap on there and we should be ready for our oil pan. And indeed we are. Go ahead and bolt this guy on just like so. And we're ready to build the top end. Get a performance head on here. This all bolted down nice and shiny, beautiful parts here. We'll be ready for all the diff all the individual, all eight push rods here. And now go on our rocker arms. Skipped one there, didn't I? There we go. Get that one on and do all 16 of our rocker arms, or all eight of our rocker arms on this side. 16 in total. <laughs> That being done, we are ready for our engine head cover. And we can move on to our spark plugs and exhaust manifold. I, actually, I got headers for this. Got spark plug one, spark plug two, three, and four. There we go. We'll get our header on here. They still call it an exhaust manifold, but definitely a header. Nice and polished for sure. 
Okay, that is that side of the engine done. Let's go on and build on the other side. This side has been completed, so now we're ready for our intake manifold. All nice, performance and polished. Looking very nice. As well as our performance carburetor. I still need to build out the rotor and all that. Get to that here in a moment. Put our performance air filter on as well as our cover for that. Jump over here to our rotor. There we go. All this performance as well, as you can see. Get the ignition wires on here and don't forget the clips. There we go. There's one and two. Now I believe that is indeed everything. Our motor is assembled. Man, that thing looks good. I love the red with the polished and everything. It looks so good. Such a good balance. Let's get our engine bay ready for this beautiful engine. Let's get the new radiator in here. That old one was shot and was unable to be repaired. And get our radiator fan housing and fan in there as well as our coolant reservoir and our power steering reservoir and brake booster. There we go. Okay. While I'm thinking about it, looking at all this rust and everything, looking pretty rough in there. Let's hit the car with the welder, get that taken care of. And use equipment. Yes. That's going to help a lot. Already looking much better. Before we put the motor in, I want to move on to the front suspension, just so we have a little extra room to be able to see a little better and everything. Get this rim off of here. Of course, we've got stuck lugs. One there, one there. Get those out of the way to reveal our brake setup here. We got to get our caliper out of here. Brake pads. Get that rotor off of there. Our disc. <laughs> My apologies. Oh, yeah. Got to get this uh, CV shaft out of the way. Get our wheel hub bearing. Front wheel hub. I get a lot of questions from people if uh, this is accurate, if Car Mechanic Simulator is accurate to actually repairing cars in real life. And yes and no, it is. You get it, it helps, it gives you a very good general idea of what, every, what everything does and stuff like that. But in real life, removing bearings, removing these rubber bushings, things like that are not as simple as this game makes it out to be. And a quick job can quickly turn into an all day job just running into little things like that, especially on older stuff that's all rusted and kind of, you know, seen better days or been abused or anything like that. Um, then you get rounded off heads on fasteners and things that just turn into a nightmare. Um, maybe a stuck bolt that breaks the head off in, in something and then you got to drill that out. It's just, there's things like that that aren't quite represented here. Let me remove, speaking of removing rubber bushings, we'll get that one out of the way as well as this one. So I don't have to worry about it when we do drop this K member here. All right, that is that side pulled apart onto the other. And with that, we'll get the steering rack out of the way. Get these rubber bushings out of here. There's one and the other. But yeah, it does give you a very good general idea of what it is you're working with. And this front differential here, get that out of the way. The whole front suspension, that looks much better with all that rusty stuff gone the whole front suspension is torn apart onto the rear we'll get this rim off of here spray that guy down we do have disc brakes in the rear which i was hoping for i figured as much it's the unicorn on the uh, real 65 mustang you would have drums front and rear typically almost always Unless it's like some sort of like resto mod, thing like that. You usually have the drum brakes. Get this cover out of here, upper suspension arm out of the way. Get our shock absorb shock assembly there out. We can drop our bottom suspension arm. Get all those out of the way and that is done. But for young people wanting to learn, this definitely gets you pointed in the right direction. Another thing I suggest is if you want to learn mechanical stuff and working on things, there's always like uh, 
the free section on like Craigslist and stuff and marketplace people list like broken old lawnmowers and stuff like that for sale. A lot of that stuff transfers over from like the single piston engines and things like that. Just go grab those, take the engines apart, look how they're built, the carburetors and everything. Um, put it back together, see if you can get it running. That's that's how I learned how to do it. And now I uh, restore classic cars and stuff all self all self taught. So it is uh, very addictive and a lot of fun. But yeah, this definitely points you in the right direction and getting familiar with the terms of things and, and what everything does and, and how it all kind of works together. It's, it's a very good way to start learning how it all works. Time to rebuild our suspension. We got to get our K member here installed. Get a rubber bushing. One of several rubber bushings. Rubber bushings all over, especially this car has a lot of them. Get our steering rack in. And that can lead to our inner tie rod. There we go. If I could speak today, goodness. All right, get this one on here. And that Richard Petty car in the background. If you guys that are not subscribers that are possibly new here, uh, any of these cars you see around, I've done videos on. You can just look up. They're all pretty recent, really. There's a old classic hot rod outside and stuff like that. That was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed that video. And to you new subscribers, I picked up a lot of new subscribers since going to weekly, weekly uploads. Guys, welcome. I'm super stoked to have you here. Uh, truly appreciate you subscribing. Really do. That's pretty awesome. Very humbling, I will say, to, to see how many people just want to hear what I have to say or watch me play a car mechanic simulator. Actually, that's more what it is. <laughs> Front wheel hub here, but I'm happy to have you aboard. Welcome aboard. Wheel bearing there. And to those of you who've been here for, since the beginning, I still see some of you post or, or comment and uh, it's like, man, it's been here since the beginning. Really appreciate you guys still sticking around. What else? Are we, what are we missing here? Oh yeah. We need to put our front differential in. There we go. Now we can attach the drive axle. That's what it was. All right. That is that side built out. Let's go to the rear and build that out. We've got our rear axle knuckle housing. I guess I bought one too many of those, apparently. That'll happen sometimes. I'll just go on a buying spree and not totally pay 100% attention. Brake disc on here, rear drive axle. On it goes. This is all pretty simple back here. Get our brake caliper on. Bolt it on. There we go. Now we can do our upper suspension arm. I guess I should have worked from the inside out. Would have made a little bit more sense, but oh well. They started me out there with the knuckle housing, right? Get that on there. And that is, oh, yep, we're definitely going to want to have that, one of those in there, shock assembly. Let's go ahead and add our fuel tank now since we're right here and our performance fuel pump. And it goes and our battery can go in as well. Which era of Hunicorn is your favorite? I do like the gold wheel. When I keep, I can't keep track of the name of the different versions of the Hunicorn. It's gone through some, you know, different versions and they're all really cool. But gold wheel version does stand out to me. I do like it. Getting all four wheels mounted and balanced. We're good to go to install the wheels. Let's get the, this rear one on first. Get on there. And stand back and take a look. Oh yeah, I do like it. I dig it. Well, I suppose now is as good a time as any to go get that engine and drop it in. Carry it on over to the engine crane. Install. That's the one. <laughs> nice. All right, send this thing back over. Now, what's cool about the Hunicorn, even though it is a modeled after a 65 Mustang, it's technically a mid-engine car. Any, any vehicle with the engine mounted behind the front axle is technically, or I don't know, I guess you wouldn't call it axle, but behind, behind the front spindles, maybe, uh, is technically a mid-engine car. Very cool. I don't say that with 100% confidence, but I believe I've read that somewhere, that that is indeed true. Correct me if I'm wrong. Feel free. I've been wrong before. I've been known to do that. Get some of these body panels on here that have been missing. 
Make this thing look like a car again. Get it all together. Looking good. I have, still need to get a grill. Haven't got that yet. But the main parts we're getting taken care of right here. Got to get that tail light on there. Rear bumper. That <laughs> looks so good. It's looking like a unicorn. There is the grill. We got one headlight there. One headlight there. And our engine cover there. <laughs> that looks so good. It looks pretty slick like this without all the de decals. Got to have somewhere to sit. So we get the right seat, left seat. And steering wheel. That's all there is to that interior. It is modeled so good. That carbon fiber looks really, really good. Another well done mod by Payne. Here we are in the paint shop getting ready to paint the car. Check out what liveries we might have for this. There's some good ones in here. I like that one, which that's the one that this the this particular version of the unicorn had. There's that one. Very cool. That one. We got that one and then I believe, yeah, we got that one more and then there's like the cool. That's actually pretty slick the blackout. And then we have stripes and I just realized I forgot a tail light. We are missing one tail light. We'll get to that in a little bit, but for now, I'm just going with the one that the gold wheel version unicorn had the non turbo. I'll just paint the car It'll probably be a wrap, but we'll say we'll paint it. Looks good. Now, I'm no unicorn expert, so I could be off on some of the details and things like that. I just really like watching the videos. So I'm not, not an expert on the car like some people are. I need to go grab that taillight. And there we go. Back in the garage to do some fluids and hook up the drivetrain. Let's get the hood off of here. Oil. Brake fluid. Power steering fluid. And coolant. Now, I think it's going to be kind of pointless to just go with the stock transmission, even though we were able to repair it. Uh, we're definitely going to want to go with the adjustable, upgradable, the, uh, the adjustable transmission for this thing, uh, for sure. Get our performance flywheel on here. Clutch plate, which is the clutch. <laughs> clutch pressure plate. Bolt that down. And get our throwout bearing on. Here we go with the performance or the adjustable transmission and we get our starter on then our drive shaft and we should be pretty much ready to go there it is let's see if she'll start or if i forgot something i often do we'll find out together here jump in the seat not that seat there we go and see what we got <laughs> it starts. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Let's go see what kind of power we make. Here we are, the moment of truth. The factory power was 882 horsepower, 1,128 foot pound of torque. Anything over, really, is huge gain. Let's see what we get officially. And it's climbing. We got a ton of torque. Look at that. Incredible. And we have 1,450 horsepower, 1,836 pound feet of torque. Unbelievable. We gained 568 horsepower and 709 pound feet of torque. Absolutely insane. This car is going to be a handful to drive. Getting everything aligned here and we're good to go there. All right, headlights aligned. Man, look at that thing. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love this thing. I brought it outside just to look at it in the sunlight and it does not disappoint. Let's take this thing to the speed track. I'm, I'm wondering if we can break our current high speed with this thing at the speed track. Cause this thing, eh, if any car could do it, I would hope that this one would with the amount of torque and horsepower we have. Our current top speed is 214. So let's go give it a shot. And here it is. I'm actually going to scoot back a little bit and use every little bit of the runway we have. Get on back there. And these are the race tires, so hopefully they'll hook up and hold. Oh, too far. Oh, there we go. It's, it's touchy. All right, here we go. I'm going to slowly build into it. Oh, it's bouncing off the limber. This thing is a rocket. We're already at 100 and 200 and oh yeah oh yeah we pegged it right there 
We definitely broke the record and we need to go adjust our transmission a little bit. This thing's a little rocket. Okay, here we go again. And full throttle. Already at 150. Just like that. 200. 250. Unbelievable. 280. 90. 299. Oh, I gotta hit the brakes. Gotta shut it down. Okay, 299. Absolutely insane. Totally not accurate because we couldn't shut it down in time. Let's see what top speed I can get to and be able to shut it down and not go off the runway. 260. 280, 290. Okay, let's start applying the brakes. This thing takes a little while to get slowed down. Oh yeah, not a problem. Back to coasting. We can get it up to 290 and slow it back down. But at, at that point, when you go to from 290 to 299, you're covering so much ground so fast that it just gets to the point where you can't, you run out of runway. I'll try it one more time. 280, 90, let's shut it down, 296. I don't know if we're gonna make this. e brake. Nope. <laughs> Crashed in spectacular fashion. All right, so we know we can go 290 and slow it back down. Yeah, you're just covering ground, so much ground that uh, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to shut it back down when you've covered so much ground in that few seconds. It's unbelievable. I'm glad we're starting with this unicorn because I want to eventually do every single one of the unicorn variants that there are because there are variants. Uh, in this mod, so that's really cool. So I'd like to do every single one, so it's good we're starting with this one. Let's see what it'll do as far as donuts and stuff. It does the fun all-wheel drive stuff, for sure. Oh, that's so good. Pardon me bouncing off the limiter, but there we go. <laughs> oh, that's a blast. This car is so fun. I don't know about selling this one. It whips around so good. It's so satisfying when all four tires kick in like that. It is so much fun. And on these race tires, I mean, it has to have these race tires, but it makes it a little, little tricky to drift around with, kind of, because those race tires grip so good. I absolutely love this thing. This thing is just so satisfying to slide around. All right, enough of that. Let's head back to the garage and see what kind of profit we made on this thing. It looks so good out in front of the shop that I think it needs to stay there. I'm not going to let this fun go for right now. I'm going to hang on to it. Just like this uh, Model T pickup here. Bring a little attention to the shop, right? Uh, it's just so satisfying to take this thing out for a rip that uh, I'm going to hang on to it for a little while. Just, just enjoy it uh, for the time being. But let's see what kind of money we made if we were to sell it. Uh, a profit of 126299 And we'll go ahead and clear out the inventory. 2500 bucks there, not bad at all. I may tweak on this a little bit, paint it, or wrap it in a different, uh, different scheme or something, mess with the wheels, tires, things like that. Guys, that's going to do it for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you made it this far, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Hopefully you liked it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.